I was talking to my friend about cryptocurrencies and some meme coins that we were messing around with and other things. And I thought, you know, I actually know cryptography. <laughs> I took a course in grad school on cryptography and we used this book and we went through the entire book. The professor, he is now retired, was super awesome. He would teach super, super slow on purpose. And I think it's because he had a really strong accent, um, but I understood him, but he went really slow on purpose. And I think that made it really good because we covered, I'm, I'm pretty sure we went through the entire book. So this book is called Introduction to Cryptography with Coding Theory. And it is the second edition. And it's by Trapp and Washington. This is the international edition. Um, I, if, if I can find this book, any version of this book, I'll leave a link in the description. I don't think it's that easy to find. Um, I don't think that cryptography is a popular course. I mean, maybe now crypto is much more popular. This book, you see when it was published. So this is before Bitcoin, right? And this actually has um, elliptic uh, curve cryptography. We're going to take a look at that in this video. I'm going to show you some more advanced things in crypto that are used. Uh, so yeah, classical crypto systems. It's got all the basic stuff you need basic number theory. So it does use some number theory. If you have some number theory background, it helps, but in theory, um, you can kind of just jump into this. You know, I had a teacher when I had this, so that really helped because I had notes. Uh, I also read the book. I did both. I would read the book and go over the notes. I've read most of this book. Discrete logarithms. Here's talks about RSA. RSA is really cool when you first um, see it. You know, cryptography is really cool when you first see it. You've got the plain text, you've got the cipher text, you've got the key, you know, this, the whole setup is really interesting. Then you have different um, encryption techniques. The plain text is basically what's, uh, is the unencrypted message. And the cipher text is the encrypted message. That's how it works. Usually it's something like you have a, you have characters, you have actors, you have uh, Alice and she sends a message to Bob and Eve is in the middle, you know, Eve, I guess they use the name Eve, maybe for like Eve's dropping and she tries to intercept the secret message. That's the idea, basically. That's how we always did it in class and stuff. It's really, really cool stuff. Elliptic curves, that's cool. We're gonna look at that. Lattice methods, error correcting codes, um, just all kinds of stuff, right? And it's got a lot of content. Let me just tell you, I know this because I was tested on all of it. Oh, you know, we had tests. You know, when I, when I took this class, my friend came over one night before the test and we ordered pizza. We were eating pizza and stuff and hanging out and studying. And it was like one in the morning, one thirty in the morning, maybe two. And the teacher emailed us a list of topics. And my friend goes, it's the test. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's sending us the test. So I guess the teacher was feeling guilty or maybe worried like the class would fail the test. So he sent us a review in the middle of the night and we stayed up and we went over that review and we got A's, right? So yeah, good times. Classical crypto systems, good stuff. Yeah. In the past when I've taught pre-calc, um, sometimes I would give them like a really fun, like extra credit problem using something like this, where you basically assign a number to each letter. And then you can, what you can do is you can like, I don't know, just you can put some numbers in a matrix, right? And those numbers can represent like a secret password. And then you can multiply it by another matrix. So boom. You've encrypted your text, right? And then to decrypt it, you multiply by the inverse matrix because the inverse times the matrix is the identity. So you get back the original message, which is called the plain text. So you could do a really simple um, encryption method with matrices. It's just something I've always done for fun in pre-calc when I've taught that. Uh, kind of fun for pre-calc students to see some cryptography, right? I don't know. I think it's really cool. Cryptography is something I get excited about. I am really into uh, crypto, um, you know, because I, I you know, I, I learned this stuff a long time ago and it's cool. We talked about quantum computing. That is uh, a big thing that people talk about quantum computing. I'm sure you've heard of it. Um, there's a lot of hype around it. There's a lot of theories. So it's not a real, like it's not, it hasn't, the thing is people always say, you know, if quantum computing, computing comes around, is it going to break Bitcoin? You know, is it going to, is it going to break these algorithms that we have, you know, things that are taught in this book? Um, I think that there will be new methods created, right? It's going to be a slow process. So yeah, I mean, the world reacts, right? We had AI come out and the world reacted. So 
I think I think now YouTube tags like AI content now. So I mean, the world reacts an attack on RSA. Wow. Yeah, RSA is really cool. Hey, let's look at that. Let's look at that uh, elliptic curve cryptography. I believe it's it's back it's near the end of the book. Let's find that and let's take a look at it. So we've got Goalie codes, linear codes. I think it's I think it's 16, but I don't. Yeah, it is 16. It is chapter 16. That's what I thought. Yeah. So this is really interesting. Here's the elliptic curve crypto systems. Let's start at the beginning so you can see. It's actually really basic. Um, it does use some number theory. Like you, it'll make a jump. As we go through it, you're going to notice like, okay, all this makes sense. And all of a sudden it'll make this like big jump. And you're expected to know some number theory. So this book does actually teach you number theory. Um, but again, it really helps. You know, I've done a lot of the exercises from this book. Remember, I, I use this for a course and we covered the entire book and we had homework problems, you know, we had tests. It was, it was pretty serious stuff, but I was very lucky and fortunate to have a very good teacher. So, um, yeah, all, all props to, to that man. So in the mid 1980s, Miller and Koblitz introduced elliptic, elliptic curves into cryptography and Lenster. So fairly recent and Lenster showed how to use elliptic curves to factor integers. Since that time, elliptic curves have played an increasingly important role in many cryptographic situations. One of their advantages is that they seem to offer a level of security comparable to classical crypto systems that use much larger key sizes. For example, it's estimated in Blake et al. that certain conventional systems with a 4096-bit key size can be replaced by 313-bit elliptic curve systems. Using much shorter numbers can represent a considerable savings in hardware implementations. Cool. So this is, you see the, you see the dates here, right? So this is big. I, I want to emphasize that. So this is the big deal because when you were in a calculus class, right, the math you were studying is hundreds of years old, right? This is from the eighties. So it is very, very different. Um, uh, very, very different. So this is the kind of stuff that is cutting edge in some sense, right? Um, I don't know. It's, it's an area where I feel like there's room to grow. So like if, if you wanted to be a person who studies cryptography and worked on these methods or, or things like that, I think there's, there's, there's opportunity here, right? I feel like this is an area of mathematics that's, it's not too hard, but it's not too easy. See, if, if, if this is something I used to have his teacher, he, he passed away a, a long time ago, um, he actually knew Max Zorn, uh, and he uh, he said that in research, if a problem is too difficult, people don't care about it because no one can solve it. It's just too hard. You're not going to have a bunch of people working on it. If a problem is too easy, then everyone knows the answer. So you need something that is interesting but not too difficult. I mean, this is hard, but you could read this book on your own, and, and you could learn. And I will try to leave a link in the description, by the way. This is like the more advanced stuff in the book. So if we go back to like the beginning of the book, you see it's, it's much simpler. Anyways, let's, let's go back to 16 so you can um, see a little bit more of 16. So here it talks about the addition law. Let's look at this. An elliptic curve E is the graph of an equation, okay, where A, B, and C are in whatever is the appropriate set. They could be rational numbers, real numbers, integers, mod P, so that, you know, elements of a field, any, anything, right, et cetera. In other words, let K be the rational numbers, the real numbers, or the integers, mod P, a prime P, or those who know what this means. Any field of characteristic, here we go. I knew it was going to talk about it, not to, and that's great. It's great that I called it out. I feel like a champion. Then we assume... A, B, C, and K, and take E to be the set here. Okay, so it's the set of all points on that curve, basically, right? It's all the ordered pairs that lie on, on that curve. And let's go back to this curve here. This is the elliptic curve. So it's the set of all ordered pairs on the elliptic curve E. That's what this is. This is basically the graph. You can call it the graph of the elliptic curve as well. As will be discussed below, it is also convenient to include a point Okay, so this is an ordered pair where the components are infinity, comma, infinity, which often will be denoted simply by infinity. Hardcore, right? So not what you do in your typical college algebra class, right? This is not your basic high school mathematics. This is hardcore stuff and it's cutting edge. So I think crypto is a really cool field. Um, unfortunately, the bad part is like if you go to college, 
it's really hard to learn this in school because it's usually not taught. So I took it as an elective course. I'm pretty sure it's rarely offered. Uh, and I was very lucky that I guess the professor had an interest specifically, I think he was doing research. Um, this is a while ago. This is, this is, I'll date myself here. This is before Bitcoin, right? This is before Bitcoin where, um, and the hot topic then was, you know, elliptic curve stuff. And then, and then Bitcoin came out. Um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I will try to leave a link in the description to this book uh, in case you want to check it out. Crypto is really, really cool. Um, it's, it's, I feel like it's an application of mathematics, right? Um, you've got this other field, it's another field, but it's, it's math, right? It's a lot of math and it's really interesting. Um, I think it's great. So yeah, I'll leave a link in the description if I can find it. Also, if you found any value, please subscribe. If you want to, if not, that's cool too. Main takeaway you take away from this video is that this book is amazing, um, for crypto. Also, if you want to learn math, check out my courses, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Uh, they're on Udemy, but use my links from my video here or from my website because you will get a low price because I lowered the prices to the bare minimum. But yeah, it's an awesome book. Take care.